GOC seafloor monitoring data released in October 2018 revealed something impossible. Not a stable volcanic flank, but a mountain 500,000 years old sliding into the Mediterranean Sea, driven by gravity alone. Mount Etna's southeastern underwater slope moved four centimeters in eight days. But here is what the headlines don't tell you. The more precisely we measure this movement, the more certain catastrophic collapse becomes, and the less we can predict when 20 million coastal residents will have 15 minutes to evacuate. October 10, 2018. Science Advances Publication. Four centimeters of movement in eight days during May, 2017. The volcano is 500,000 years old. 20 million people live along Mediterranean coasts at risk. Catania, just 10 kilometers from Etna, has 300,000 residents. Tsunami arrival time is 15 to 30 minutes. 8,000 years ago, Etna's eastern flank collapsed catastrophically, triggering a tsunami across the Mediterranean. The expectation is that volcanic flanks move because magma pushes them. Mount Etna is monitored constantly. The reality is that gravity, not magma, is pulling Mount Etna's southeastern flank toward the abyss. The underwater portion moves faster than the visible mountain. Monitoring tells us collapse is inevitable, but it cannot predict when. This is not volcanic activity. It is a slow motion avalanche 300 meters underwater, controlled by physics we can measure but cannot stop. Flank movement is episodic, stable for 15 months, then four centimeters in eight days. Movement increases away from the volcanic center. Five acoustic transponders deployed in April 2016 provide only monitoring, not prevention. No evacuation protocol exists. Billions of tons of volcanic rock are at risk of sudden collapse. This was not ignored because it is unlikely. It was ignored because for 8,000 years, Etna has been stable, and human civilization cannot prepare for threats that exceed our historical memory. The question is no longer whether Mount Etna's flank will collapse into the Mediterranean. The question is whether we can detect the acceleration from slow creep to catastrophic failure when the difference between measurement and evacuation is measured in minutes, not months. Mount Etna rises 3,357 meters above sea level. The volcano contains approximately 500 cubic kilometers of volcanic material. It is 500,000 years old. As Europe's most active volcano, Etna has erupted seven times since 2000. It sits on Sicily, just 10 kilometers from Catania. Normal volcanic flank movement is driven by magma intrusion. As magma rises, it pushes outward, deforming the edifice. Movement should be greatest near the summit. Decreasing with distance from the volcanic center, it should correlate with eruptions. 8,000 years ago, Etna's eastern flank collapsed catastrophically. Computer simulations show the tsunami spread across the Mediterranean, devastating coasts from Sicily to North Africa to Greece. The flank rebuilt over millennia. Between the 1980s and 2016, satellite measurements showed the flank moving seaward at 2 to 3 centimeters per year. Scientists assumed magma pressure was the cause. The rate seemed slow and stable. 300,000 people live in Catania. More than 1 million people reside along eastern Sicily's coast. Malta has 500,000 residents. The Greek Ionian Islands hold more than 200,000 people. Total Mediterranean coastal population at risk exceeds 20 million. That is equivalent to Florida's population living within tsunami range with 15 minutes of warning. Sicily's tourism generates 15 billion euros annually. In April 2016, researchers deployed the GOC monitoring network. Five acoustic transponders were placed across the underwater fault line. Each sent signals every 90 minutes, and travel time between transponders revealed distance changes with precision below one centimeter. This is marine geodesy. Historical models assumed magma drives movement. The GOC data revealed something different. Gravity drives movement, not magma. 
movement is episodic and underwater moves faster than land. No correlation exists between movement and eruptions. Better measurement provides more certainty of collapse, but not the ability to predict when. Monitoring provides perfect hindsight, not actionable foresight. This is how it was supposed to work, until May 2017. Then Dr. Morelia Erlob's GOC transponders detected something that violated every assumption about volcanic flank stability. In April 2016, Dr. Morelia Erlob of Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research Kiel led a team aboard the research ship Poseidon. The project was MAGAMET, Marine Geodesy for Offshore Monitoring of Mount Etna. They installed five acoustic transponders across the fault boundary. Dr. Erlob said that at Mount Etna, they used a sound-based underwater geodetic monitoring network, Marine Geodesy, on a volcano for the first time. They placed three transponders on the sliding sector and two on the stable side. For 15 months, from April 2016 to April 2017, no significant movement was detected. The flank appeared stable. There was no immediate threat. Then came May 2017. Over eight days, the flank moved four centimeters horizontally. That equaled an entire year of land movement in one week. The deepest transponders moved the most, contrary to magma-driven expectations. There was no corresponding eruption, no seismic swarm. Gravity, not magma, was the driver. Dr. John Murray of the Open University said he was surprised to learn that Etna moved so much in just eight days. A sudden collapse of Etna could be absolutely devastating to the region. That amount is the equivalent of a skyscraper foundation shifting two inches in a week. Undetectable to residents, but catastrophic to structural engineers. The team analyzed the pattern. Movement was episodic, not continuous. Deformation increased away from the volcanic center. The conclusion was gravitational spreading. The entire flank was unstable. The mechanism became clear. Etna is heavy, 500 cubic kilometers of dense rock built on sedimentary layers. Nothing stops the slide toward the Mediterranean. 8,000 years of deformation is approaching failure. The depth profile showed minimal movement at the summit. The mid flank on land moved two to three centimeters per year. The lower flank underwater moved that same amount in eight days, equivalent to 18 centimeters per year if sustained. Movement accelerates with depth and distance from the summit. Professor Hydran Kopp of Geomar stated that the entire slope is in motion due to gravity. It is therefore quite possible that it could collapse catastrophically, which could trigger a tsunami across the entire Mediterranean. On October 10, 2018, Science Advances published the findings. Gravity, not magma, drives flank movement. Catastrophic collapse cannot be excluded. The entire Mediterranean is at risk. Timeline prediction is impossible. It could be years, decades, or centuries. Mount St. Helens provides a parallel. On May 18, 1980, the northern flank collapsed. 57 people died. Damage totaled $1.1 billion. But St. Helens is much smaller than Etna, and it collapsed on land, not into an ocean. 8,000 years ago, Etna collapsed. The tsunami spread across the Mediterranean. Etna has collapsed catastrophically before. Not whether Etna will collapse, but when. Not if tsunamis will be generated, but how many minutes populations will have. Mount Etna is not awaiting diagnosis. It is in terminal gravitational failure. We are monitoring vital signs on a patient we cannot treat. Geologists recognize the threat. Engineers propose solutions. Theory after theory emerged. Each one collapsed. First theory, enhanced monitoring. Deploy 50 transponders, 20 to 30 million euros. But May 2017 revealed the flaw. Stable for 15 months, then four centimeters of movement in eight days with no acceleration. 
Monitoring detects movement after it begins. Transponders detect in 90 minutes. Data transmission takes two to four hours. Alert issuance takes one to two hours. Total warning, four to seven hours. Tsunami arrival, 15 to 30 minutes. Too slow. Second theory, a Mediterranean tsunami warning system using pressure sensors and coastal gauges. 100 to 150 million euros. Travel time from Etna to Catania is 15 minutes, and to Malta, it is 45 minutes. But Catania sits 10 kilometers from Etna. The tsunami reaches Catania in 15 minutes. Zero evacuation time for 300,000 residents. Many buildings are under five stories. Evacuation capacity is under 30,000. Projected deaths range from 50,000 to 100,000. Third theory, eruption forecasting. Monitor magma to predict destabilization. But May 2017 disproved this. Four centimeters of movement occurred with no eruption and no seismic swarm. The movement was independent, gravity-driven. Magma monitoring provides zero information. Movement is greatest farthest from the magma source. Magma and gravity are decoupled. Fourth theory, engineering intervention. Deep anchoring, buttressing, drainage. Costs of hundreds of millions to billions. But it is impossible. The flank is 100 cubic kilometers. The sliding surface is two to five kilometers below the seafloor. No anchor reaches bedrock. A buttress would need hundreds of meters in height. The mass is too large. Imagine 50 million trucks pulling downslope. Physics defeats engineering. Theory after theory collapsed. Transponders cannot detect without warning. Alerts cannot evacuate people in 15 minutes. Forecasts cannot predict a gravity collapse. Engineering cannot anchor a mountain. Every solution assumed geological timescales could be managed on human timescales. Etna's collapse took 500,000 years to accumulate and it will release in minutes. We brought stopwatches to measure centuries. This is not a monitoring problem. This is a collision between geological inevitability and human geography. Mount Etna has been collapsing for millennia. 20 million people have been building cities in its path for centuries. We perfected measurement of a process we cannot prevent, affecting populations we cannot evacuate. The more precisely we measure, the more certain collapse becomes, yet the more impossible to predict when. Gravity-driven flank failure operates over decades to centuries. Tsunamis require evacuation in minutes. Perfect knowledge provides zero actionable warning for populations with 15 minutes or less when billions of tons slide into the sea. The volcano is 500,000 years old. The current flank formed 8,000 years ago. Gravitational force is immutable, collapses physics, not choice. Human intervention is irrelevant. GOC provides measurement, not prevention. Episodic behavior is stable, then catastrophic. Detection lag is measured in hours, evacuation in minutes. More data equals more helplessness. Catania, 300,000 people, is 10 kilometers away. Cities cannot be relocated. This is not a preventable disease. It is genetic inevitability coded 500,000 years ago. Coastal ecosystems can be scoured one to five kilometers inland. Fisheries collapse. Recovery takes 50 to 200 years. Deaths range from 50,000 to 500,000. Infrastructure loss is 200 to 500 billion euros. Tourism collapses. Economic recovery may take 20 to 50 years. Two to five million refugees would be displaced. Islands could be permanently abandoned. Temples, ruins, and cities would be inundated. Hospitals destroyed. A blame cascade begins. Litigation could total 50 to 200 billion euros. Scientific credibility would be damaged. 2025 to 2030, waiting period. Population growing. 2030 to 2050, collapse any year. Monitoring more sophisticated, not predictive. Beyond 2050, 8,200 years since last event. Statistically overdue. But geological statistics do not care. 
Human planning operates in years. Geological processes take millennia. Do we relocate 20 million to prevent deaths from an event that might not occur for centuries, destroying economies? Or accept that 50,000 to 500,000 will die because we cannot evacuate in 15 minutes? No option protects both civilization and life when the threat operates on geological time. The Mediterranean is a bathtub. Etna is dishes teetering on the edge. We installed cameras. We calculated the physics. We modeled the splash. But we cannot remove the dishes, empty the tub, or prevent 20 million standing in water when gravity wins. The question is whether humans can prepare for a disaster where perfect knowledge provides zero ability to predict timing, where monitoring measures inevitability without enabling prevention, where the gap between geological certainty and human evacuation is millennia versus minutes, 8,000 years since last collapse, 20 million in the impact zone. 15 minutes to evacuate. Every centimeter we measure makes collapse more certain while bringing us no closer to knowing when to run.